Hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad Taste of Music. New Drake album, Certified Lover Boy. You guys saw the cover for this thing. It looks terrible. Uh, it's got an average score right now of a 40 out of 100. There's a song on this album that literally has an average score of a 5 out of 100, okay? It's called Fans. Fans, fans, baby, cause you know I'm fucking fans. Which, I mean, from the name of it alone, kind of explains probably why uh, it is where it is, but yeah, anyways, this is Certified Lover Boy. Uh, apparently, look, if there, it, look, Drake should not be starting beef if he's gonna release something that looks this f***ing stupid, okay? The cover of this album, the track listing, everything about this makes me wanna crawl into a ball and roll myself down a hill. It's an hour and 30 minutes long, for the love of God. An hour and 30 minutes. 21 songs. Girls Want Girls, featuring Lil Baby. Girls Want Girls, wow. Way Too Sexy, featuring Future and Young Thug. Wow. Pipe Down. Look, I used to really like Drake, all right? Not not recently, not even close to recently, as uh, things have just gone down the deep end ever since Views. I don't even know, a little bit before Views, but yeah, Views was really where I just was like, man, what the hell has happened? So uh, yeah, now we're many years past Views, and it seems like the storm is still brewing. And uh, you know what? He's never gonna stop, because he's the most popular artist ever. So, why would he ever need to stop? Without further ado, Certified Lover Boy, first song, Champagne Poetry, let's go. Okay, you know what? It's kind of cool sample. Same bad. It's actually a good intro. I like the sample. It sounds good. He's got a great flow. I like the simple. I love you until I, until I, it's like, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, cool, switch up. But when that comes to politics, man, I can't even know what this is pretty good. And I always censor myself because no matter what they report, no me. Ah, see, that's where the Kanye beef is. See, Drake was censoring himself before Kanye, okay? I see, I understand now. Wait a minute, is it actually censored? Wait, are you serious? Wait, it's actually censored. Hold on. This is this the official version? Are you serious? This is a very good intro to this album. I gotta say, this is like um you know this 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 has some flavor and some uh, some style to it that feels very Drake-like. Okay, that was a pretty decent intro. I mean, sure, it's it's Drake, you know what I mean? I could easily say, go in this as a hater and judge it as, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. but as a music critic, the song was pretty good. I think he did an alright job putting his uh, putting his feels down into this track, and I like the sample of it. Uh, I'm going to give that a smiley ball. I actually thought this was a pretty strong way to start the album, as it's actually got me, like, involved. You know what I mean? It, it hasn't pushed me away. It, it actually got me interested. Plus, the song was really long, and it had a cool switch up in it. It's slow, but it, you know, it's like it's vibey. There's, there's something going on with it. I, I actually kind of liked it. Next song, Poppy's Home. Okay, this, Poppy's Home. Yo, it's an actual good Drake song. That's right, I had a, I had this next on the queue for my stream. Uh, uh -huh. Nah, what can I say? It's too late to end it. Stomping on his beat like a motherfucker. Sitting my bed to the bristle, head to the whistle. I'm so official, all I need is a whistle. Bitch named Crystal, let her suck my pistol. She opened up a modern and I blow her brains out. First off, you know what it is if you heard Drake. Making holes wobble like a bridge in an earthquake. Now let's get back to the music uh, of uh, Certified Lover Boy. Maybe, hey, you know what? First song wasn't that bad. Next song, Poppy's Home, okay? Good intro, bad album. <laughs> Who is this discount Nicki Minaj? Oh, that is Nick. Wait, that actually is Nicki Minaj. God damn it. Okay, I'm going to give that song a, uh, a shrug. 
It's a positive shrug, but it's a, it's a bit of a shrug. I thought that the overall vibe of the song was kind of boring, but it's still carrying something. There's still something going on with this album that I feel like is uh, is is appropriate. And so, uh, you know, I I feel like I'm still interested two tracks in, which is the the problem is is I've seen the track ratings. You know what I mean? I've seen the track ratings, and I and I have a feeling that my excitement's only going to go down as this album goes uh, along. But I think that there's some sort of like unique style that Drake has had with the last few albums in terms of his production that I'm hearing again here that actually is kind of interesting that I think works for him. Next song, Girls Want Girls featuring Lil Baby. Whoa. 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 Say that you a lesbian girl, me too. Wow. Girls want girls want <laughs> Dude, this guy's. Oh my god. Dude, really? I mean, I get you have little baby on the track, but you're really gonna copy his like flow, his accent, and everything on your verse, down to literally sounding like he's dripping off of the microphone. <laughs> smiley ball it's a motherfucking smiley ball dude it's the corn look it's corny okay it's got terrible lyrics in there it's like a fucking hallmark postcard of a song you know what i mean it's it's got that energy right it's it's cheesy but it's got charm and it's entertaining. And I thought Lil Baby did fantastic. I thought it was a really good verse from him. Uh, and I, I like the beat. I like the vibe of this track. Even though this is one of the lowest rated songs in the album, I gotta say, this, this is honestly, this this shit like, it hits the right buttons for me. I, I fuck with it. The whole Twitch chat's going nuts. They're saying Brad's a sellout, unfollowed. <laughs> no, I like this song. I think I, I think it works. I think it really works for Drake's style. Uh, and I thought Lil Baby did fantastic. I was really entertained by it. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it kind of slapped. Consider me entertained. Next song in the Bible. All right, in the Bible. No, this song's kind of boring, but it's still got a vibe to it. I like the production a lot. It's actually an interesting comment here. It feels like you're way less critical of this album than Donda, but maybe that's just because of your expectations. Look, I don't, like, I feel like there is less of an expectation to me uh, to, to fall in love with a Drake album, especially since I'm not as interested in his drama with his kids and all that crap. I'm able to look past a lot of that and just say, is the song vibey? Does it have all right production? Is it entertaining? And uh, if these elements are yes, then overall I'm okay with this. Uh, and for this song, it is a little bit boring. Where I, as a, with at least the last song, I thought that it, like the the bad lines made it extremely entertaining. Uh, this one I think is like dragging on way too long. It doesn't need to be five minutes. Previously on Ready to Die. Okay, interesting transition. There's a vibe going out throughout this album, and I gotta say it's pretty solid and pretty orchestrated. Uh, and for that reason, I'm going to give this song a shrug where I think it's one of, uh, easily the most boring track so far. It went on for way too long. It still also had some pretty solid production. And uh, yeah, it's, again, I have pretty low expectations for this album. So the fact that I'm able to float along with it and think, uh, all right, you know, I just, my time isn't completely wasted. Uh, that's a pretty good sign. Next song, Love All featuring Jay-Z. People never care till it's all I pay. Loyalty is priceless and it's all I need. The issue with Drake is his it's all your fault. I'm hurt mentally and mentality. Whatever, dude. Like, the guy's the biggest artist on the planet right now. You're telling me the guy's like gonna be okay mentally? All right? Like, like sit back and enjoy the shit show is what I say. As uh, if, if you're coming here expecting Drake to to sit here and, uh, and tell you how life is and how you should live your life, then you are completely out of your mind. But if you sit here and say, all right, let's listen to uh, the most popular artist in the world uh, complain about how he's the most popular artist in the world, it's, there's some sort of entertaining merit to that, all right? And, and I prefer that over some boring shit, so I'll, I'll accept it. Was all on me. Enemy. Niggas want to kill me and you want me to be friendly. No 
I mean, it's totally like head in the clouds. Everybody left me. What did I do wrong? I'm the greatest person ever. But whatever, dude. Oh, that's the first like real yawn that came out of me. That song was pretty harmless. I'm going to give it a shrug. I thought the sound of it was pretty tame. Uh, Jay Z did all right, but also, you know, it's, it, it was a little phoned in, and Drake was pretty boring by the end of it. But you know what? Still carrying a little bit of a vibe. I, uh, I'm not hating this album, but it is starting to become a little, um, a little bit of a slog. Next song, uh, Fair Trade. Hey. A vibe that's the thing there's a feeling to this album all right come on you're telling me you care about the samples that much i'm well, sure i'm probably not gonna vibe for the entirety of 21 tracks but i'm like, hey look i'm i don't want to just go into this album to hate it you know if i'm feeling it i'm feeling it look i don't expect drake to be a hard artist you know the corny thing is what he's been doing for years gonna be pregnant by the end of this reaction hopefully Talk about this shit. This left. Mix ain't the best. Again, okay, this is like the most passive album Drake could have possibly put out. But at the same time, if you're not going to try, at least make it sound like a passive, strong vibe, which is what this album is. I, I really don't feel like Drake is trying. But as soon as you accept that, you accept the fact that he's not really trying all that hard. Uh, then you're able to, you know, accept the album for what it is, and what the album is, is pretty solid vibes. I'm going to give that song a smiley ball, as I thought that was one of the better tracks of the album so far. I like the switch up, thought uh, Travis Scott did pretty alright. Uh, it's not a great song by any means, but I think that that had the strongest vibe, or one of the strongest vibes here of the uh, of the whole track list so far. And it got me a little sleepy throughout it, but at the same time, it sounded really nice in the background. I'm not really asking for much more. Alright, next song, Way Too Sexy. Which, before listening to this album, I would be like, oh wow, oh god, here we go. But now, now I'm up to this point in the album, and I'm like, honestly, what what exactly can happen here that's going to be more corny than what's already happened? You know what I mean? It's, it's like, uh, my expectations have kind of been flatlined a little bit, which is uh, kind of a good thing for this album. Way Too Sexy with Future and Young Thug. I'm too sexy for my shirt. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Wow, I spoke way too soon. I'm too sexy for that jack. You know what? This song is the right level of trash. I just feel like you don't get this level of trash in mainstream music, you know what I mean? We got fucking, like, this is like the worst sample ever, but Future singing over this is just like, extremely funny. I don't know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of vibing with just how terrible this song is. It's, it's like, uh, it's, it's hitting this right level of irony for me, where it's, it's, it's like, it's impossible to take this seriously. It's kind of a fun song. That's that action. Her best work on her knees. Too sexy for this cash. Dude, this is this is a vibe. With young, and it's got young thug and future on it. I mean, what a perfect if you're gonna make a song like this, that's how you do it. What's up, Mike? It got changed, Mike. Dude, I don't give a fuck. That was a smiley ball. Dude, that was extremely entertaining. I thought that the sample is just ridiculous. It, the, the whole idea of this song is so over the top and ridiculous, but also it works with this like over the top ridiculous certified lover boy theme of this album. The vibe continues with this track as it's corny, it's terrible, but it's extremely engaging, entertaining. And look, it's honestly, I'm not that bored. I think that this has a bit of a vibe to it and, uh, and, and I'm feeling it. it. It's hitting the right buttons for me mentally. Uh, I, I'm not even ashamed to admit it. I think that this is uh, I think that this is doing the right things It's, it's hitting the right buttons It was like the worst thing that could possibly happen, but it got like the biggest smile on my face I thought that was fantastic next song uh, TSU Dude these beats slap like I like these beats a lot better than anything off of scorpion. That's for sure. I got a drink in the studio, and I don't just mean that I'm in this bitch. Please make the most of this. <laughs> like, oh my god. I get it. Like, I got a Drake in the studio, and it don't just mean that I'm in this shit. 
You know what I mean? It's like stupid lines like this that are that, that just pop out and make me smile. R. Kelly's credited as a songwriter. Oh my God, he is. Wait. I gotta stop it there. Shag. I thought the beat was all right, but uh, the song's pretty boring. In too deep. In too deep. Wow. Future and future. Dude, these beats sound good though. That's the thing. It's like it's got some good synths. Oh, yeah. You a little post so baby. You gonna take off like a. Okay, this, now see, now this isn't charming. We got it dotted by some fifth four strings. I like the production you know though, what it means unfortunately. Oh, this one's, oh my god. Pop that shit, pop that shit, baby, that pussy was so worth the wait, okay? Extra large and extra hard. Alright, future kind of saving it. Well, that was a weak little segment there. Dude, this chorus is horrific. To get this, you know what? It's still not a red headphones. Uh, specifically because I think Future saved that shit. It's a sh uh, low shrug. So I thought that was by far the most boring song, where it was too scattered to feel like it was uh, like it was even working as a slow R&B track. And I thought the switch up could have been good, but yeah, that chorus was horrific. So, it actually is probably my least favorite song of the album so far. Next song, Pipe Down. I wanna lick you up. I wanna dick you down. Alright, this song doesn't work. The beat is way too much here. Um, this is a total vibe killer. Uh, and, and I mean, I appreciate the, the ridiculousness here that's been, you know, some of the highlights of the earlier tracks has been from a lot of ridiculous bullshit ideas, but I don't think they work here, especially with this beat. I'm almost contradicting that as it sounds like a very serious, pristine, uh, well done beat, unlike, say, what, way too sexy, where it felt like very much the opposite. How much I gotta spend for you to pipe down? How deep I gotta dig for you to pipe down? Pause. What? Is this really the chorus? How much I gotta spend for you to pipe down? Are you sure that's... Is that exactly how you want to word that, Drake? Certified corner boy. Okay, this song is terrible. This, uh, this song is going to get a... I'm not even going to finish this. Red headphones. Uh, I think that the beat here is horrific. I think that the chorus is terrible. And, and none of it's ironic, like some of the other tracks here. I think that this song has a severe disconnect between the beat, between the writing. It, it feels just like a mess. Next song, Yiba's Heartbreak. Alright. Sounds sweet, but what the hell is it doing on this album? You guys think this is the most enjoyable track, then what the hell are you doing here? Seriously. I mean, you're, you're telling me you're able to sit through this entire album if you think that that's your favorite track on this album so far. It's an interlude on a Drake album that, much like some other points on some other Drake albums, makes no fucking sense and shouldn't be there. It feels like a serious spot and in other words, like, not at all serious album. Like, why? I'm going to give that a shrug. I think that the tone is completely off with having that on this album. Next song, No Friends in the Industry. All right. Here we go. Oh, Yeah, yeah, you're right. This energy on this track is terrible. Pause. That's the one line I'm gonna mention here. How are you gonna tell someone that their circle is shrinking? Like, how are you gonna say that your circle's shrinking, see that some boys escaping, when the entire song is about you having no friends in the industry? It's a shame they had one of the better beats of this uh, of this um, album, but goddamn, Drake's performance was unforgivably bad. I'm going to give that a shrug, as I think that the beat made it relatively listenable. And if it didn't have such a good, uh, strong, solid beat, I would be dying right now. Next song, Knife Talk, featuring 21 Savage. Okay. See, look, this album had a very fragile ecosystem, okay? It was corny garbage 
that was charming and entertaining and it has completely lost that vision as it is now gone completely off the rails and is proven uh now that it honestly could have probably been 10 songs long instead of 21 songs as i'm truly blown away with how boring and pointless some of these more serious tracks are dude why if i wanted to listen to 21 savage i'd listen to a good 21 savage song the song is literally called fucking knife talk featuring 21 savage you know what i mean it's like like what's really it, it feels like this one was like accidentally transported onto this track listing through a freak lab accident i fuck with her and fuck with her and her i hit up her tell her do the her shit oh, stop Nah, I'm not doing this. Red headphones. Dog. Uh, this is so pointless. It's like... It's just... What the fuck, man? This is like a circus show with having fucking 21 Savage show up for a 21 Savage song on Certified Lover Boy. Next song, 7 a.m. on the bright, uh, the bridal path. Let me tell me exactly what they need for me the first second they speak to me. I'm okay, Chicago Freestyle Part 2. This is the most filler song of all time. I'm giving it a red headphones and not even Dog. going to fucking finish this as it's four minutes long. And I have a feeling it's not going to change throughout the entirety of it. In fact, let's uh, test that theory. Wow. Who would have guessed? Next song, Race My Mind. Yeah, I kind of like this song too. It, it reminds me of what was good about the first half. Okay, emptiest beat switch of all time, as if this album needed another empty beat. I think that you could have gone from way too sexy to race my mind, literally gotten rid of tracks 8 through 14, and the album would have kept the flow going. And I probably would have enjoyed this song because of that. But it took this giant segment over here and just like stuck this shit in this album for no reason. Honest to God, it is it just lengthened the track listing for the sake of it, and I'm I feel just saddened. Okay, interesting ideas. Overall image of this song is a bit of a failure. I'm going to give it a shrug as I do think that it restores the tone of what this album originally was, and that makes me a little bit happy as I found this song to be a little bit more tolerable than the last tracks. As I think that there was a really strong vibe happening in the first eight songs, or the first seven songs that this song brings it uh, back to, at least. Uh, making it so that I feel like I'm going to be able to tolerate the next, uh, next like, five, six songs a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, still, the, the, it had a lot of ideas that were just terribly executed. And, and I, I believe from just truly a lack of talent in the room. Um, next song we got here is Fountains. Featuring Thames. Oh, oh no. Alright, stop. Oi. Oi. See, now, now this is unironically terrible. The beat. Sounds like a shitty beat from Views. And like the most phoned in shit possible from Drake. That song was insulting to my brain. That was really bad. Dog. That was like, that was just genuinely insulting. Next song, Get Along Better. <laughs> Wow, that song was overblown, horribly mixed, and just horrible. Holy shit. Dog. That was bad. 
Wow, that gave me tones and eye flashbacks with the with a song sounding like uh, like an artist that has no merit to be on a song that sounds like that being slapped over over it. Next song, "You Only Live Twice," featuring uh, Lil Wayne and Rick Ross. <laughs> There we go. Wow. That's cold. <laughs> it's there's such a clear gap of like someone who's actually trying as opposed to Drake who's so absorbed in drama that he has no connection to the real world and it really just feels like a joke wow there's such a clear gap Dude, Wayne has been on some shit, like, ever since Carter 5. Yeah, dude, if this was a Rick Ross and Lil Wayne song, perfect. Exactly what I could have wanted. It's a shame, because the song would have been very good without Drake. Um, but out of respect for Lil Wayne and Rick Ross, I'm going to give that song a smiley ball. Because I think they both killed it. They, they made this song fantastic. It, it had a great vibe going. And honestly, if Drake actually tried, I think it would have fit the album very nicely. But, uh, no, Drake is on a different planet um really just not living in the same reality as Lil Wayne and Rick Ross were on that uh on that song because they did fantastic they really did but uh Drake did uh you know yeah I am Y2 next song dude I didn't even real oh this would be a great Cuddy song. Finding myself as it fades, fly by. Such a huge energy dip as soon as Drake starts, dude. I literally have gone from like thinking Drake was doing okay from the very beginning to literally thinking he's ruining his own album by the end of this thing. Truly. Out of respect for Kid Cuddy, I'm gonna give that song a smiley ball. I think Drake ruined the song, okay? But, Kid Cudi did an amazing job over it, and every time Kid Cudi was humming, I was feeling this crap. And considering the fact I'm ever going to come back to this album, I appreciate it, alright? It's, it's keeping me alive a little bit. It's keeping my heartbeat moving. Alright, next song, Fucking Fans. This song is in the single digits. I, I never see this on anything. Single digits is unbelievable. So, uh, Fucking Fans, here we go. I'm still working on me. Great singing so far. Television, is that you? Wow. I just sound, dude. Wow. Damn. Not only, see, that's the thing. It's like, I, I've, I know the subject matter of this song, you know? But the actual, like, sound of this song sounds as bad as Television off of Donda, okay? Like, it sounds like, like, Drake literally sampled his own vocals off of another track and slapped them on here with just horrific highs. Like, no one listened to this shit before it was put out. Good God. Oh my God. You said I was fucking up when I was out here fucking fast. Damn it, it made you look crazy. All right, well, at least I know people weren't lying. This is easily the worst song in the album. It's, it's, oh my God. Wow. Dude. Dog. Oh my God. 21 songs. 21 songs. He really felt it necessary to put on fucking fans. That was, that was really, uh, oh, whoops, my camera dropped. That was a, a really eye-opening, heartfelt, emotional performance from Drake. Look at this. My fucking camera's perma blurry. Come on. It's because I dropped it. Fucking fans. Wow. Wow. What a song. Next song, final song, uh, The Remorse. 
He feels bad for putting out this album. The song's six minutes, by the way. Yeah. Now it's me from the TV, but I'm done with that. And I know I never like to rap in a way that wasn't monotone. Cause you know that's the only tone I'm I feeling. My heartbeat has been peeling back. Okay, I'm done. I'm not. Dude, you, you fucking kidding me? Jesus. Certified monologuer boy. Uh, that's gonna get the red headphones. Dog. Wow. Six, six minutes of that crap, huh? To end off your album. Drake is so disconnected from reality that the best parts of this album were the spectacles of that. Uh, anyways, that's Certified Lover Boy. Um, this album is a mess, to say the least. Yeah, this album has um, some like ironic qualities that really got me and like uh like i felt like this album had a strong tone starting off and i was like oh this is gonna be like an interesting alternative r&b hallmark card type an album that's full of cheesy lines stupid crap that all in a weird way is like charming but that charm literally went so thin as soon as like the album started getting more serious it, it just all went out the window and I ended up feeling like I was stuck on a roller coaster that only went like two miles an hour, you know, like up the hill and then at the top of the hill, the ride ends. Truly, I think that this album just nosedived, but not even, not in a roller coaster way. My overall score to this album's a three plus. A three plus, which is higher than I thought I'd give it. Uh, but what can I say? There, there's actually a couple of I had songs in here that had some great ironic qualities. So as I thought, the production on most of these tracks was pretty fantastic. Um, and the ones that weren't fantastic, what the fuck are they doing here? Oh yeah, that's right. Certified streamer boy. Certified uh, collecting streams because he needs to still be number one to protect his fragile ego. You know, because that's all he's got now. That's all he has to him is uh, that he's number one. That's like his only distinct uh, personality trait. Um, wow. Yeah. I, I really wish I had more to say, but I want to just move on because this album really dragged me down by the end of it. Um, what's Fantano going to give this? I think he's going to give it either a three or four. I think he's going to do that because I think he might actually agree with me. With, uh, with the ironic qualities actually being hilarious. Um, that or he's going to give it a not good. But I, I don't know. I think he's going to give it a three or four. Thank you everyone for watching. My name is Bradley. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, shout out to all the certified uh, lover boys. And uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks for watching YouTube. My dog farted in his